All right, Frank Ragnall says that he ain't retiring. He said, I'm not retiring, mine. He said, Osby's back, Osby's back, Osby back. I ain't retiring. So good he came out and shut down retirement talk. Um, shit, Frank said, I got to add more icing to my cake. I got to stack my cake up, wake up, bake up. Got to get my cake up in my Wiz Khalifa voice, man. He said, I got to get that bread up. So. Frank Ragnow, Detroit Lions Center. Frank Ragnow shut down retirement talk. Detroit Lions Frank Ragnow announced he is retired at the NFL Honors Red Carpet. So great platform to announce it on. Shout out to Lamar Jackson for getting MVP, um, two-time MVP. Detroit Lions Center. Frank Ragnow is not considering early retirement. Let's get that out of the way. First, the All-Pro offensive lineman told Dave Burkett of the Detroit Free Press in no uh, uncertain terms that he plans playing in 2024. I'm not retiring, Ragnar said the NFL Honors Red Carpet event. Glad he said it to the Detroit media. Later expanded, I just needed a few weeks to get healthy. He said, I'm, I guess my typical offseason routine is kind of get back and trying to get right back into it. And But I think as I'm getting older, I need to understand sometimes maybe less is more. And I need some time to make sure I'm healthy. And then we'll get rolling again. And I said, bro, don't go back right into working out. And I think the Lions should exempt him. He good enough and, and his character is great enough. And his consistency is great enough where the Lions should go ahead and exempt him from these, you know, uh, mandatory offseason workouts. I feel like, you know, he should be able to come to training camp when you feel like it. You know what I'm saying? That's just my opinion on it without being docked. He shouldn't have to come to voluntaries and OTAs and all that shit. I think he built up a reputation that, you know, he going to come in and shape. He going to do his thing. Remember that deer where, you know, uh, Aaron Donald shot, uh, shot, uh, set out? And he missed the whole training camp and then came back and hit the ground running. I think he that caliber player. I think he that type of consistent player, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? So I think he that caliber player, bro, where um, yeah, I think he'll come in good shape. You know what I'm saying? And that's what that's what makes veterans really walk away from the game faster is training camp. You know what I'm saying? That's what that's what make you know veterans walk away from the game faster. You know, uh, so um, so that's that's that was good to hear. Um, he went on to say, um, he said, "I need to find a uh, a way to get back to Frank. I don't regret any of at this at all, but it weighs on you, right now. Set the time, and I'm just gonna take some time, really figure everything out, and make sure that I'm feeling good, not only for me the football player but for me the best husband the best father everything as well he said we're not going to put him with brad home said they're not going to pressure him into making a decision yeah man go home be with your kids bro you know about a month with them you'll be ready to be running running to come back to the grid on <laughs> you know what i'm saying you'd be running come back to the grid on you know uh so uh you know you know, you'll be running back to the grid arm, my boy. Uh, so, but yeah, man, that's good, man. We, we need him, dude. You know, we need him. You know, you know. Uh, you know, so, but nonetheless, man, he probably our best player, man. You know, by far, for sure. You know, you know, for real, he our best player by far. But uh, but uh. But moving forward, I mean, that's good to have because then we got Jonah Jackson as a free agent, Graham Glasgow as a free agent. And Glasgow is important anyway because uh, he, he he's important because uh, because he the backup center in the guard. He got the versatility, but I do think, you know, you probably want to sell Graham Glasgow up and draft somebody younger that can kind of come in and, and – and groom them to play that center and guard role just in case you you may you you may need him. You know, just in case that you may you may need him in a in the long run, man. So I think that's 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 uh 
That's very important. That's very important. So, but that's just my opinion on it. Uh, but it's good to have him back. I mean, like I said, I, don't, I mean, I think he is the best player. I mean, he's the best, you know, center. And when we took him, one thing, one thing we did know is that he hadn't get. I think he gave up no sacks in college or like one sack in his whole college career. So, you know, even though we was all like, who the fuck is this guy? You know, but, you know, I think that's about Bob Quinn, probably best draft pick. And it looked like it was a no-brainer. <laughs> that's what it looked like. It looked like he was a no-brainer. When you start kind of after you had your knee-jerk reaction, who the hell the F is this? You start hearing some of the statistics and how good he was. I mean, one more, if we would have passed on him one more pick, he would have been in Atlanta. And, you know, the Atlanta Falcons took a guy named Billy Price, who's no longer even on the team anymore. So I chew on that for a minute. You know what I'm saying? So that dude is no longer on the team, which is crazy. So, I mean, it's, you know, it's a great pick. And without him, our line wouldn't be the way it is. I remember they started him off at guard to get him comfortable. I think Graham Glasgow might have been playing center. And then, you know, they moved him over to uh, – they moved him over to center to get him more comfortable. So I think – uh. It was, you know, that's the, the one gift that Bob Bob Quinn gave us. That's the gift that keep on giving. You know, that's the gift that keeps on giving. So, um, so you know, but hey, uh, but yeah, he's 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 one of a kind. You know, he he is truly one of a kind. He is truly one of a kind, bro. So, um, you know, definitely. You know, I mean, especially when you go from an era of uh, remember we had another guy that was from Arkansas that played center after Iola left. I think his name was like Travis Swanson. He wasn't shit. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he wasn't shit. But then you know, you know, uh, yeah, dog wasn't shit. But uh. <laughs> You know, Dominic Raiola, he had one great year. I don't know how he with him and Jeff Backus kept being here every year. Um, so also it's a change of pace because Jeff Back is the one that got Matthew Stafford effed up in Chicago. Raiola was always getting blown in Stafford lap. Pause. So yeah, that's something to kind of chew on for a minute. But hey, let me know what you girls and guys think, man. Thumbs up the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. Check out our Detroit Lions Talk playlist for more videos like this. Hit the link tree. You can find me on Twitch, Twitter. I mean, Twitter, X, Spotify, Anchor, Cash App, Venmo, PayPal, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, the whole nine. Appreciate the love and support. Uh, let me know what you girls and guys think in the comment section. Check out Detroit Lions Talk playlist for more videos like this. Don't forget, we did a Detroit Lions live stream. It's on Spotify. I think we did that Tuesday. Um, uh, then we turned around and... Uh, did a piston stream and wrapped it, you know, wrapped up the trade deadline on Thursday. So we've been really, really active, just you know, as usual, but more active uh, on the channel. So make sure you check out the new content. Check us out on Spotify. All that information is in the link tree. Peace.